As you saw in the previous video, chicken has altogether 40 bones in the vertebral column, starting with the atlas bone and ending with the pigostyle or the tail bone. Let's take a closer look at the first four cervical vertebrae. The atlas and the axis bone are morphologically quite unique and differ from the rest of the vertebrae, so identifying them from the pile of bones won't be much of a problem. The third and fourth vertebrae can also be identified with ease in that when the individual bones are laid out on the table and viewed dorsally, they have this prominent pairs of tiny holes called the vertebral arterial foramen, clearly visible. The other vertebrae also have them, but they aren't as visible when viewed from the top. Also, these two vertebrae have smooth margins unlike the other vertebrae. The last two cervical vertebrae, that is, the 12th and the 13th, can also be identified without much effort. When laid out and viewed dorsally, just like in the third and fourth vertebrae, the vertebra arterial foramen of the last two vertebrae are clearly visible. When viewed laterally, the cervical ribs of these two vertebrae are comparatively much stubbier and outwardly bent than the rest of the cervical vertebrae, which have slender and pointy cervical ribs. And now, we focus our attention to the 5th to the 11th cervical vertebrae. These seven vertebrae look similar more or less. They all have sharp and slender cervical ribs that originate from the top of the vertebrae called the transverse process and runs almost parallel to the main body of its vertebrae on both sides of the centrum or the vertebral joint. Among the seven vertebrae, one of them is distinctly smaller and shorter and its cervical ribs are also comparatively broader than the rest and this vertebra will come immediately next to the fourth cervical vertebra. The eleventh vertebra has a body that's slightly broader compared to the rest and that's one effective way of identifying it. The sixth to the tenth vertebrae are almost indistinguishable with extreme minor morphological differences and so it's almost impossible to pinpoint which comes next to which. So what you can do is employ a sort of trial and error method. And here's how we can do it. Each vertebra has at the anterior or top end a well-defined, roughly concave region called the centrum, surrounded on both sides by a pair of joints called the pre -zygapophysis. At the posterior or bottom end of the vertebra is located the caudal articular surface, surrounded by a pair of joints called the post zygapophysis the caudal articular surface and the post zygapophysis of a preceding vertebra connects to the centrum and the pre zygapophysis of the succeeding vertebra and so on so what you can do in this trial and error method is to connect these joints in the pattern that i've just explained and then figure out which two vertebrae fit perfectly and work your way with the rest of the vertebrae moving on to the thoracic vertebrae Chicken, as already explained in the previous video, has seven thoracic vertebrae. These vertebrae are differentiated from all the other vertebrae by the presence of a neural spine on top of each vertebra. In the skeleton that I obtained after maceration, two of them remained fused. More of them or even none of them might be fused in your case. I don't know. The first two vertebrae are easy to identify, as they both have relatively tinier neural spines, as you can see in this image. Of these two, the one with the even tinier spine comes first and joins with the thirteenth cervical vertebra. The other one comes second. The fourth and the fifth vertebrae have pronounced crescent grooves on their ventral side. The seventh vertebra has a transverse process that's larger than those of the rest of the thoracic vertebrae. The articulation pattern is the same as that of the cervical vertebrae. The caudal articular surface and the post-zygapophysis of a preceding vertebra connects to the centrum and the pre-zygapophysis of the succeeding vertebra and so on. Next we have the sin sacrum. As explained in the previous video, it's formed of a fusion of 14 lumbosacral vertebrae. This part of the syncecrum will join with the seventh thoracic vertebra in the pattern already explained before. Finally, we have the caudal vertebrae, which are six in number. The sixth structure, which is roughly triangular and bilaterally flattened, is called the pigostyle or the tail bone. Except for the pigostyle, these vertebrae are roughly butterfly-shaped and the tiniest of all the vertebrae. 
The ventral surface of this vertebrae, unlike those of the rest, are smooth and almost even. Their dorsal surfaces have tiny bifurcated neural spines. The first caudal vertebra is the one with the broadest transverse process. The fifth caudal is the smallest of them all. The fourth caudal has a transverse process that's more or less horizontal compared to the preceding two vertebrae that have a transverse process that's slightly curved. As for the second and the third caudals, which are virtually indistinguishable from each other, you might have to figure out their order in which they are to be arranged by again employing the trial and error method. Now that we know the order of arrangement of the bones in the vertebral column, we can proceed with articulating them. To articulate the vertebral column, we'll be using a rust-proof metal wire or a rod to impart extra stability to the articulated skeleton. The metal rod should be thin enough to be able to snugly pass through the neural canal, that is, the holes in the vertebrae that houses the spinal cord, but it should also be thick enough to provide rigidity to the vertebral column. This is necessary because the limbs and the ribcage of the skeleton will eventually be supported by the vertebral column. For the articulation, take the metal rod and start inserting the cervical vertebrae in their order, from one end of the rod like so. Spare about a centimeter of the metal rod on one end for the skull. Then using a permanent marker pen, mark the points where each vertebra would eventually fit on the rod. Having done that, remove the vertebrae from the rod. From over a dozen chicken skeleton images that I've referred to, I have found that the neck or the cervical region bends at two points. The first bend is at the second, third and fourth cervical region. The second bend is at the eighth to the eleventh cervical region. So using the previously marked points as your guide, make bends at these two regions like so. Also make a slight downward bend here. Now reinsert the vertebrae starting with the cervical and using hot glue, fix them in position. Again using the previously marked points as your guide. Once you're done gluing the cervical vertebrae, proceed with gluing the thoracic. Once you're done with that, spare a length of the metal rod, which is equivalent to about half the length of the syncecrum, and cut off the rest of the rod. Then glue the syncecrum in position. The caudal vertebrae would not need a wire to fix them. Hot glue alone would suffice. We now move on to the pelvic girdle. This is technically not a part of the vertebral column, but it articulates with the syncecrum and thereby appears to be closely associated with the vertebral column. As already explained in my first video on chicken skeleton, the pelvic girdle is made up of two separate halves lying on either side of the syncecrum. Each half is known as os innominatum and made up of three parts, the ilium, ischium, and the pubis. At the junction of these three bones is present a concavity known as the acetabulum which is the articulation point for the femur. This clip shows how the pelvic girdle articulates with the syncecrum. And here's the articulated pelvic girdle. And by the way, I don't know if you've noticed yet, but there's a mistake in how the caudal vertebrae have been articulated, which I myself came to know only after I've articulated the entire skeleton. The surface that houses the neural spines should be on the top, while the smooth side should face the bottom. Once you're done gluing the vertebrae, this is what you'd get. The next video will be on articulating the wing bones. Do follow the link in the description below that will take you to the wing articulation video. Thanks for watching.